They say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. You know what that means. Yes, we're going way back, the year 478 BC. Athens has just allied itself with a collection of Greek city-states to project its own growing power and prestige. But a rival power, Sparta, has a formidable alliance of its own. The two systems are wildly different, one ruled by kings, the other by democracy. But according to ancient Greek historian Thucydides, it is the fear of a rising, ever more powerful Athens that pushes Sparta to act and makes war inevitable. Now fast forward two and a half millennia. The year 2017. Let me explain how the world works, okay? Donald Trump is in the White House and a Harvard professor pays his National Security Council a visit. The topic, what to do about China, the world's newest rising power. And Graham Allison, that professor, has brought with him a cautionary tale. Over the past 500 years, the world has seen 16 cases of a major rising power threatening to replace the ruling one. 12 of them ended in war. It's known as the Thucydides Trap, after that ancient historian who documented the Peloponnesian War. Conflict between rival great powers is likely, but it doesn't have to be. Creative statecraft has helped to avert war in four of those cases, including three from the last century. Allison is using history as a warning, a wake-up call for both American and Chinese leaders to better understand each other's intentions, lest an emerging divide between Washington and Beijing further escalate. His briefing with the NSC lasts two hours, generating intense interest, as he describes it, particularly from his former student, then deputy assistant to the president, Sebastian Gorka. After the meeting, Gorka suggests bringing Allison's message to his boss, White House chief strategist, Steve Bannon. And that's where it gets interesting. For Steve Bannon, Chinese leadership represents America's greatest existential danger, as China looks to reorient tech and global trade with Beijing at the center. He's pressed a harder line on everything from tariffs and artificial intelligence to intellectual property and the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. You're not like the Thucydides trap crowd, and I know you did this seminal interview with Graham Allison, but not what, what those guys want, which is to kind of us stumble along and play along with China. If confrontation is inevitable, Allison's warning of a trap is moot. With waning Western influence, it's better to make your move early while America still has the upper hand. Remember, Sparta, the more established power, still won the Peloponnesian War. But doesn't the United States need its allies if it wants to contain China? That hasn't exactly been a strong suit of this administration. President Trump not only prefers bilateral deals, he's also either threatened or imposed tariffs against long-standing allies like Japan and the European Union. Sparta fan or not, that sort of thing makes life more difficult if the goal is to confront Beijing. A nationalistic approach can leave nations feeling isolated and vulnerable. And yet, it's nationalist and populist movements that have gained electoral momentum across Europe, Latin America, and the United States. And Steve Bannon, once a central architect of Trump's America First doctrine, is playing the role of lead evangelist. Let them call you racist. Laissez-vous appeler racist. Let them call you xenophobes. Mais xenophobes. Let them call you nativist. Laissez-vous les appeler nativistes. Wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> 